Ladies and gentlemen, today is October 18th, 2017, and we have a brand new shiny rig. I know you can't really tell because you're just looking at me through the camera, but if you could look the other way, you would see a brand new awesome laptop that you might hear the fan running during the during the show here. But regardless, today we're going to be talking about Mecha Bunny portraits and drawing portraits and delving a little bit further into, well, actually, to be honest, we're just kind of taking it easy today. I'm just going to draw this girl's face and draw a fun little portrait. And in the meantime, give you guys an update as far as what's been going on, why we missed last weekend. I know that you guys are probably a little bit sad about that, but I have an excuse, kind of. Well, sort of. It's just, I've been really absorbed in my work lately, guys. And it's not that, it's not that I don't love you. I truly do love you guys. And I love being on here and talking to you guys about the show. But uh, just been just doing things with the concept art boot camp, as well as uh, things with icons. You know, for those of you who don't know, I'm working with Wave Dash, right? Their logo looks like this. <laughs> Wave Dash creating a new platform fighter game, and it's been very challenging and rewarding to be a part of that team. And uh, of course, I've just been so inspired by my coworkers lately, and that actually got me thinking. Got me thinking. I, I really wanted to talk about that today because what is what is inspiration? Like, where does that actually come from? And what are some of the things that you guys should be looking for as far as when you are joining a team? Things that you should be looking for when you join a team. We're just gonna jump right into this, this sketch. I can totally tell this fan is gonna get really loud. So I apologize if it sounds like a jet is taking off in the background, but regardless, we're just gonna get right into this. So uh, the first thing that I wanna do, okay. So when you're drawing portraits, here's why I absolutely love drawing portraits. It's because, turn that mic a little bit more this way. I'm still getting everything set up so that way it feels like my old setup. And everything feels good except for this fan. I'm wondering if I can get like a thing that sticks underneath the, the laptop that will make it quieter. Uh, Cause that's the only thing that I don't like about laptops. Uh, why I prefer desktops more, uh, more often. In fact, I do have a desktop. Maybe I could set that one up if the, if the fan ends up being too annoying. But anyway, okay, so let's first talk about, let's get back on track. Let's talk about portraits. Let's talk about portraits and why I like portraits. So portraits are cool because they're a chance for you to basically draw off of a head, right? I always like to start my drawings with one of the most important pieces, right? One of the most important focal points. And that is, of course, the head. And oftentimes, whenever I'm drawing in my sketchbook, I'll oftentimes start with the face. I'll start with the face, I'll start with the head. I'll have a general idea of what I wanna do with the body. But for the most part, I just quickly start laying down um, head shapes, head shapes, and, and specifically faces. Because wouldn't you hate it if you like drew out this entire awesome pose and, and you put all this awesome detail on this character's you know, costume and it looked amazing and then you went to draw the face and it looks terrible. You know, it's like, no, I'd rather have the body and the pose be a little wonky, but the face looks good, All right? I'd rather that be the case. So what I want to do here is I want to explore a little bit more of La, La Pan's face. By the way, I did name her. Her name is La Pan, which is a play off of the proper way. Okay, okay, so quick, quick lesson. Quick lesson in French. This is not Lapin. You you spell it like Lapin, but you pronounce it Lapa, Lapa, uh, Lapa, Lapa. I'm pretty sure. Anybody who speaks French can probably correct me better on that. So I thought about that and I was like, okay, how do we, how can I take that and turn that into an English word? And then so I came up with Lapin, Lapin. And it sounds like a name. It sounds cute. It doesn't. It's not Lapana or Lapone or any of that stuff. It's, it has a very nice uh, original sounding name. So Lapon, Lapon, I thought sounded good. So we're rolling with that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is the first thing I want to figure out is how I want to structure this face. Cause up till now, she kind of had an anime look to her and I don't want necessarily that. Cause I do like, of course I like the cute anime girl face, but the problem is that it doesn't translate very well to 3D. So I'm gonna play around with a couple different facial treatments really quick here. And then when we get one that we like, we'll then continue with the, the rest of the portrait. So I'm just gonna keep these fairly simple. I'm gonna keep these fairly simple, just drawing this kind of almond shaped head here. 
and just quickly dividing it down the middle. This is should be a good example to you guys of how I like to lay out my portraits. Um, I did like these big eyes, though. I did like the big eyes. They are, they are reminiscent of a rabbit. They are reminiscent of a rabbit. So I kind of dug that. Maybe we can roll. Continue rolling with that. Okay, so what I'm thinking here is how... Now I'm thinking more in terms of 3D. So I really want to think about if I showed this drawing to one of my 3D sculptors, would they be able to create this face? Would they be able to create this face? And so certain things start coming to my mind, such as, okay, what is the actual, like, I mean, I touched on it a little bit here on the, in the profile of Lapon. You can see here that her nose and mouth, like those things are all very good to know, like the profile, how would the 3D sculptor draw these or rather sculpt these in 3D space? All right, because when you have an anime face, you can do something as simple as, you know, you got the eyes here that are just kind of tacked on, right? Anime face looks like this, right? And then you got these two little lines and then that is the nose. But what does that translate to in 3D? And uh, a good way to actually look at that stuff is uh, PVC figurines. I really like the way that anime PVC figurines are handled. But uh, a lot of the characters in our game are not super anime. They need to have a little bit more of a realistic look to them. So let's see if we can't find a cute face that will work for Lapan. Lapa. <laughs> Lapa. <laughs> I really hope I said that right uh, for the people that speak French. Okay, so I'm liking this, I'm liking this. I'm thinking about the eyelids. Do you guys see how I draw the eyes like this? Like how one kind of goes this way? Let me grab another, let me grab another blue thing. Do you see how I create this shape here? That's not nearly the right, that is not nearly the right color. Create this shape here, but then the other eye almost looks like this. Do you see how I do that? That really helps to sell the point that your character has depth to their face. Um, so the way that I like to think about it is, okay, so this part of the eye is now over here, right? But then you have the forehead. There's all this geometry and stuff that gets in the way right here of the eye that condenses it. It condenses it on this side, whereas on this side, it's much more open. So that is what you wanna be thinking about when you are drawing from this angle. Okay, let's continue. I'm actually really liking this face. This face is cute. It's cute. There's actually some, there's a character in this first one that we did though that I don't want to lose. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll try to combine the two. Try to combine the two into our beautiful Lapin. <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> our beautiful Lapin. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm really liking that one. I like the, the thinner face. I like the slightly thinner face. Let's go ahead and draw this. Okay, cool. So this is feeling quite good. So something that I really liked about the, something that I liked about this original face was, or I guess something that I didn't like about it was that it looks nice, but do you also notice how all anime hair, it has the anime piece, right? I talked to you guys about the anime piece. I'm always doing that to my hair, right? Because it looks good, right? But all the characters, all the characters in anime kind of have that going on. And I don't want Lapon to just be another general anime girl. I want something special for her. I want something special. So let's see if we can create, we introduced this new, um, talking about this over here, over on the left, what do I feel like? I always hate like getting used to a new laptop. I, I always hate that feeling where it's like things just don't act the exact way that your old one did. You have to get used to all the new quirks. But uh, there are some quirks of the old laptop that I'm glad I will never have to see again. Okay, so over here, we introduced, <laughs> we introduced this cool little scarf thing that she wore around her neck that I really liked. And I wanna bring that into play with the new one. Bring that into play with the new one. So she'll have this thing going on. That looks good. Looks really good. I'm really digging this face a lot. Oh crap, did I? Oh. Just wanted to make sure I put that on the right layer. Oh! Control C, delete. Why is it not doing that? Control C, delete, Control V. Okay, there we go. 
Okay, sorry guys, just still getting used to it. Still getting used to it. Why is it selecting something? Why is it doing that? Did I hit caps lock? Caps lock off. What the heck happened? Something is stuck. Did alt get stuck? Hang on just a second. Let me see if I can figure this out. I think shift is being held down. This is one of the things that I've noticed. No layers are selected. Okay, I hope I got this working. Okay, this is really, really weird. The This is acting as though, I, I'm probably gonna have to edit this, uh, assuming that I don't get this fixed. Why is it doing that? Why is it doing that? Marquee, yes, select. Why is it doing that? What is causing the shift key to be held? Okay, it went away. Okay, now it's back. Is that like a new thing with Photoshop where it just like totally messes with you? <laughs> where it totally just messes with you? That is annoying. I don't like that. Okay. What, what even is it doing? Why is it doing that? This is a, it's moving, it's supposed to be moving. And then I click. Could that be why it wasn't working? This must be a new thing. Oh, this is a new thing. Oh my gosh, okay, so you can select like this, and then it automatically grabs the layer. Okay, look, look at this. Look at this, guys, check this out. New thing with Photoshop. So I was trying to like just move this. I was trying to move this layer, but because I'm not actually clicking on it, it gives me this selection tool. It's like StarCraft. So you can lasso this layer. Look, I, there's nothing selected, watch layer four. I'll lasso it like in StarCraft, and then it says layer four. Now I have it. And I have to click on the physical layer to be able to move it. That is a really weird part of the tool that I'd never noticed. That must have, okay, anyway. We have, <laughs> we have figured something out, that's great. And I'm glad that the laptop is not messing up. That makes me very happy. Okay, continuing, if I need to edit that out, whatever. But you guys tune in to see everything, so maybe we'll just leave it as it is. And actually, I don't even know if I have time to edit it. I, I'm getting ready. Oh yeah, and that brings me to my next point. I'm getting ready to go to TwitchCon, guys. We're going over to Long Beach. We're gonna be exhibiting with the new game, hanging out with my coworkers, having a good time. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be having a lot of fun. So if anybody's gonna be out in the area, in Long Beach, highly recommend you come by, stop by, say hi. I'll be there most of the day doing sketches of our characters. And uh, it seems like it's gonna be a really, really fun time. And I'm really excited for the state that the game is in. When we first revealed at Evo, it was clunky as heck, guys. Let's not, let's not beat around the bush. It sucked, right? It was not good. But the reason why we did that, the reason why we revealed it is because, first of all, we wanted to silence everybody who kept asking for gameplay. And of course, it's good, like I, like I understand. It's, it's lame to have a product that you're developing and the only thing that you can update your followers with is words, right? Hey, today we're working on this on Twitter. And it's like, that's okay, but it only goes so far. People need, they need concrete evidence. And I agree with that. So that was one of the biggest reasons why I feel we decided to <laughs> release that. I can't speak for everybody at the, at the company, but that's the way that I saw it. That was why I was excited, even though the the feedback was either overwhelmingly excited, like people were excited about it, or they absolutely hated it. And I totally get where both sides were coming from. But regardless, I'm happy that we were able to release something. And uh, now we have something, now we have something to talk about. Now there's actually something there, as opposed to before, it was just smoke and mirrors. It was nothing. There's nothing concrete there. I need to figure out what I want these designs on her ears to be. I want it to be something along the lines of maybe like this. 
Oh, yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Cool, because she's going to have like these mecha ears that kind of go back. It's almost going to be like a tank tread, I imagine. Kind of sits back like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then she's going to have these shoulder pieces. It's going to be these chunky materials. Let me show you guys a really cool way to make a chunky material type thing. All you have to do is draw one shape like this, right? Say you want that to be your chunky material. Then all you got to do is create that same exact shape, but offset it. Offset it like this. Look at that. All of a sudden, you've created, pardon the, the squiggly lines. My hand is not as stable as it used to be. But look at that. Just like that, you've created a chunky material. You can even go around the outside. And see, as you add these extra lines, it adds more dimension to the figure. Isn't that awesome? So uh, let's continue here. Let's continue here. OK, so what do I want to do with the rest of this character? For the rest of this uh, portrait. Let's see here. First, I need to deselect this. Let's move that over. Now I could, okay, it's doing that thing again. It's doing that thing again where it's trying to select. I need to figure out what's causing that. I will, I will figure that out. <laughs> I will figure that out. Rest assured. Okay, let's go back to this. Um, let's see. So here's the point where I start to work a little bit more loosely. Right? I'll be like, okay, maybe the body could be like this, and maybe the hips could be out like this. I'm thinking about that flow line. Remember we talked about that flow line last week? And I am going to have this come down like that. This goes up like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this arm could be maybe like hanging down. Keep it simple. In fact, for portraits like this, I really like to curve the body so it's going downward. It's going down in perspective, right? So the ellipses kind of turn. Well, that's really, that's really ugly, but you get what I'm saying. The ellipses are now turning downward. Makes your character look really, makes it look more cute. Remember how we talked about camera angles? If you want your character to appear powerful, you place the camera below them and you're looking up at them. But if you want your character to appear more fragile, cute maybe, then you put the camera above them so you're looking down on them. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's expand upon that. So let's have the chest now going down like this. And it's just as simple as changing a few things in your perspective lines. So yeah, I think that might work. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, let's sketch in these general shapes here that I really liked. I really like some of these shapes that we're working within here. Yeah, yeah, these techie pieces. Perhaps something like that would work. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I like that. That's cute. Very cute. Oh yeah, we gotta have the open, the open kind of tummy area. Let's kind of sketch that in. Maybe the belly button will go right there. Have these things, these pieces coming up like that. Love it. Love it. We are on our way to something beautiful. Something lovely. Okay, we'll have these things in there. Uh, okay, okay, cool. We don't need to go too far down the torso. But I really, I actually like her really big legs. I don't wanna, don't wanna discount those. Let's get those big sexy legs in there. Yeah, yeah, love it. Love it. And you guys probably think it's so funny that I talk myself up like that, but <laughs> I'm constantly doing it. I'm constantly doing it. You guys got to pump yourselves up when you're working. You guys got to ex get excited about what you're doing. Now, am I constantly saying that as I'm working next to my coworker? Am I yelling in his face about how awesome I am? Uh, no, but usually most of the time I am thinking, I get excited about my work, right? You guys should always be getting excited about your work and don't feel like you're 
you're full of yourself or it's rude, you know, or, you know, it's like you should be confident in your work. You should be confident. And if you're not confident in your work, right, because everybody, like, let, let me rephrase that. Is that maybe you can't always be confident in your work, but you should always be excited about it. You should get excited about learning. If you're not confident and excited about what you're doing, then you should be excited about the fact that you're making a mistake and you're going to be learning a lot. You're gonna be learning very quickly. Learning quicker, as we like to call it. Okay, so this hand is gonna be going down like that. Okay, see, that's what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're talking about. Okay, now the other arm, we need to think about this. I am now using my 3D using my x-ray vision to say okay here's the neck the shoulder is right about here we want to create an arm here and that will come down and rest here okay ah isn't that awesome so that entire x-ray vision thing i'm using that right now and we're going to draw that arm in wait where was that again where was the elbow i just need the elbow okay the elbow is right there okay elbow right there lovely Lovely. Actually, wait a minute, that looks weird. Why did it look good in the 3D thing and now it looks weird here? What if I died? Let's go back a little more. Gotta get rid of that other one. Okay, so let's see. I know that I want the hand to go right here. I know I want the hand right in this general region. Let's go ahead and erase this out. I wanna actually add some color on this as well. So I hope you guys don't mind sticking around for a while because I'm about to leave for a little while. I'm about to leave, well, this weekend, I won't be able to do a show. And then as far as when I'll return, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm coming back, coming back on Monday, but then I'm gonna be going back out to California. I might be busy with my friend, Jake. Maybe I'll do another show from his house. His, his house, his, at his, his house. You guys know what I mean. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. I like that one a lot more. So it feels like the arm is like going back in space. Looks good, looks good. Okay, and the other hand can be right here. The other fingers can be right there. Yeah, look at that. Love that. Love that. Okay, so let's kind of keep it like right around there. I think that's a good, good spot to start with our, for our portrait. Okay, so now that we have this selected, let's move this up a little ways. Save that out. Ooh, I like some of the lines that are coming through here. I like some of these lines that are kind of moving through this area. Pulling out details that I see within here that I really like. And this just happened by accident, guys. Happy accidents, as a great man once said. Okay, uh, let's see here. I was also watching Kung Fu Panda lately, and you know that part where Ugoi says there's no accidents? There are no accidents? That's the kind of stuff you gotta be putting into your art, people. You gotta be putting that stuff into your art, kind of. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, but man, Kung Fu Panda is such a good movie. If you guys haven't seen Kung Fu Panda, please go, go freaking watch it. It's so good. One of the best movies I've ever seen. Okay. Oh, we almost forgot about the ears. We almost forgot about the ears. So the ears, I imagine, will go back like this. And they'll go down. She's got some big old ears now. Oh, I love these things. The ears are so cool. I'm in love with the ears. La pan. Your ears. Please select this. There we go. There's a lot of things that, uh, whenever you set up a new computer, a new rig, you always come across like a bunch of settings that you don't like, particularly because this is also Windows 10. And up till now, I've been hanging on. I've been trying to save myself from going to Windows 10. I've been trying to stick with uh, stick with uh, seven for as long as possible. 
because I just nobody likes ten. Nobody wants to go there, but now they're forcing us to. We have to, so might as well grin and bear it. Go to Windows Ten. I don't know if I want the other ear sticking out that far. Maybe just a little bit down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. Cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Really like that. Okay. Um, but where was I going with that? Oh, yeah. Just setting up Photoshop. There's all kinds of weird things that just surprise you out of nowhere. You, you don't realize how comfortable you get with your, your old setups. But it's also a good time to ask yourself important questions, such as, why did I have it set up like this in the first place? Sometimes you run into things that you realize were kind of holding you back. In a way. But most of the time it's things that you just didn't like. Most of the time it's just extra things that are tacked on that you'd never use anyway. Okay, cool. So that's looking good. That's looking really good. I don't want to get too bogged down into the details because I want to refine. I really want to refine this. But uh, the thing I was getting at, guys, was um, particularly in Windows, there's this thing that happens where when you press and hold on the pen, it creates this, this white ring around it and it causes lag in Photoshop. At first I thought this was a Wacom tablet thing, but it's not. It's a problem with Windows and, and the tablet preferences and the pen and touch settings that you have to figure out. You have to go in there and figure out how to turn that off. So if that's happening to you, if you press down on your tablet right now and that white ring shows up, Highly recommend you go into your pen and touch settings. Actually, I think I had to go to the control panel under hardware. I don't want to give a tutorial on that because I don't know if I'm going to do it right, but uh, definitely look up how to get rid of that immediately because that's causing unne unnecessary, unnecessary lag to your Photoshop. And there's nothing that pisses me off more than lag in my Photoshop. Never, never, ever will I have lag in my Photoshop. Oh, also, I haven't set up my hotkeys. I just hit an old hotkey. So I have to go here, Shift F5, foreground color. There we go, cool. Let's continue with this. Oh yeah, I really liked her little Band-Aid. I liked her little Band-Aid that, that, that was right here, but I wanna change it up a little bit. I wanna change up the design of the Band-Aid. So look more like a breathing strip or something like that. Maybe I'll shrink it down a little bit because it's, now it's crowding the eyes a little bit. Shrink it down. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, yeah. I want it to look like a techie breathing strip. Let's see here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in some extra detail on these eyes. Cool, love it, love it. I like that her lips, okay, so this is like a super subtle nuance with the face, but the fact that the lips are positioned a little bit more to the right creates this feeling that there's like some extra flesh on the muzzle. I really like that a lot and I don't want to lose that. And for instance, here, let's go ahead and do this. I always like to do this with my faces, uh, particularly when I'm making small adjustments. Sometimes I will select, uh, say the mouth for instance, I'll hit control H to hide the marching ants and I'll move it back and forth or I'll hit the arrow keys to kind of, oh, here, let me move the stylus out of the way. I'll hit the arrow keys to begin moving the mouth around and kind of make some subtle adjustments and take note of how it affects the face. So I like it further back, but I also liked it where it was. I like it exactly right there. It gives the, it gives the character just that much more uniqueness to them. The fact that they have a little bit more flesh on the lips in that area. Yet they are small lips. Small lips, but they kind of stick out a little bit further. Dig that. Now can I possibly start drawing again? Oh yeah. And don't forget to deselect so that way you can continue painting when you're done. Okay, that looks cool. Let's go ahead and put some extra detail on this nose. 
I always like to just create a little shadow underneath and then put a little detail right here for the nostril. See, simple as that, simple as that. Now we have a good old nose. Let's go ahead and get rid of these extra lines around the edges of the face. We don't need those. We don't need those. Okay, now I also like to put in a little bit of a, a little bit of shadow right here just to indicate the other lip, just to indicate the other lip. I usually like to keep my bottom lips very shiny because oftentimes that's where a lot of the light hits. That's why you'll notice that oftentimes I'll just draw the top lip. Sometimes I'll even do something as simple as this. I'll just draw this, right? I'm sure you see a lot of artists do this as well, where they just do that type of thing. That actually looks really cute too. I like that one. Um, in fact, I'm a big fan of um, doing things like this, where you actually just combine the lip. You draw the lip into one simple shape. But again, there's something about this one that I really like. Something about this one that just has oh so subtle, oh so subtle qualities to it. But I uh, don't want to get bogged down in that. We got bunnies to color. Oh, you don't want to, yeah. I put like a hard line there. That also kind of works. It almost looks like she has a lip piercing, which she could. But I'll stay away from going too emo on this. Not that I'm saying all lip piercings are emo. Well, actually, yeah, they are. If you got a lip piercing, guess what? You're emo. But, but that's cool. I like emo. I used to be emo. In fact, my hair is becoming very emo. My hair is becoming very emo. Harkening back to my high school days. Okay, oh, that looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, another thing that I like to do is I'll put a little shadow right there on the eye that immediately kind of sets it into the head, helping it to feel 3D. <laughs> we like that. 3D modelers like it when they can say, oh, I could see how that would work in 3D. Yes, that's always good. I'm gonna give her some little blush lines. Very nice, very nice. Okay, cool. This is looking quite nice. I'm actually really liking this face. Now, there comes a very important part of each face that you draw. When you've hit a point where it looks perfect and you shouldn't touch it anymore. Luckily, we're working digitally and we can play around with things a little bit more. And if we mess it up, we can just go back in history. But uh, particularly, I've learned this while working with pen, is that you need to trust in your instinct whenever you get a face that you like, because sometimes putting too much detail into it will ruin it. It will ruin it and muck it up and make you have a bad day. So don't do that. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen, is now that we've got a face that we like, we are going to continue kind of cleaning up the rest of these lines. Now here's where I like to go next with my lines. I like to, we're gonna hit Control J to duplicate this layer. We're gonna continue with this, save it out. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves thus far. But the next part that I like to do with my lines is I like to go through and start asking myself, okay, where are the edges? We need to start focusing on edges. So for instance, where is the edge of this hood? Where is the edge of the fold of the hood? Here's the edge of the fold of the hood, like that. And then anything on the inside, see I'll do an edge here. I'll thicken this edge. Oh, this is a good example or a good tutorial on line weighting. A lot of people ask me, how do I know where to make the, th the thicker lines? Start with your edges. Start with the things that you want to bring out the edges of. Here's a good example right here. See, draw the edge of this ear contraption thingy, but don't worry about the lines on the inside. Go back to here, draw the edge of this one. And what this does is it creates a nice balance. It makes it interesting to look at because now your viewer has two avenues to start figuring out information. They can say, okay, wherever I see, and it can be like, I'm really exaggerating it here. It doesn't even have to be that big of a difference. 
just even just a subtle change in thickness will go a long way. But I'm exaggerating it just to get the point across. Okay, here's the edge of the hair. Let's make sure we get that nice and thick there. The edge of the face, that's already thick, looking good. The edge of this cloth. Okay, the edge of this doohickey that holds the shoulder piece. Let's fix that. The shoulder, the actual shoulder guard. And I'm going through and just erasing things to make things a little bit more clean, a little bit more clean like this. The edge of this thingy. Chest piece. We like that. Let's go ahead and erase things. I like to keep the skin particularly very, very clean. The skin areas I like to keep very clean. Because it looks weird when you have like a bunch of like weird lines in there, like old like sketchy lines. Get rid of that crap. Get that crap out of there. Although I do like those little lines right there. I do like this character looking like she has a little bit of battle damage. She's a fighter, right? She's supposed to be a fighter. Okay. Oh, and there's like this thing right there. I actually like that. Feels nice. Feels nice. This, however, this line needs to be changed. There we go. There we go. Okay, so thicker outlines, thicker outlines on the edges. Now that we've gotten that across, let's finish this up. And then we can move into Kala. Kala. I have no idea what we're going to do for that. It might take forever. But you know what? I don't care. That looks cool. Really like that. And again, a lot of these shapes, I'm just kind of coming up with on the fly. I'm referencing this guy over here, referencing this over here, as well as this old one uh, that we kind of started to figure out. Remember guys, we talked about going in there with your pen tool and starting to commit to designs, committing to lines. All that stuff is now coming together to help give me ideas basically on the fly. On the fly. Cool. Another place I like to thicken my lines is like in areas of overlap. Overlap. See how this scarf is overlapping this? And I'll press a little bit lighter here. This helps to show cast shadows. So there is overlap here. There's overlap here. See how once you start adding those in, it also continues to help uh, adding clarity to your piece. It adds clarity. We like clarity. Your viewers like clarity. Don't underestimate it. Okay, we got overlap here, overlap there. Love it. Absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. Cool. Now, oh yeah, she's got these really cool like cartridge looking things. I don't know what the heck these are, but I don't want to lose those. That's one of my favorite parts about her. So let's go ahead and put that, what we learned earlier about creating depth with our lines, let's go ahead and put that into play right here. So we've created a shape. Let's now draw that exact same shape and offset it. Now because we're looking at it from the top down, we know that it's going to be offset in this direction. We know it's being offset down and to the left because that is how we are witnessing it. Okay, we're going to draw another line in there just for funsies. Let's put a line around the edge. And just like that, you've created something in 3D. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that easy? Isn't that awesomely easy? We like that stuff. Cool. Yes. Yes! You can put a couple little techie lines in there, a couple little, some small details. Small details. 
Awesome, people. Awesome. Okay, we got overlaps. Let's finish up these edges here. Overlaps. Got some depth here. Cool. Cool. I like it a lot. I want to change up this cheek a little bit. I want to give a little bit more depth on this cheek. Uh, because as I've said before, a lot of your characters, a lot of your character uh, can be shown in the silhouette of the face or the silhouette of the edge of the face. So the difference between this, right? See where this cheek is? The difference between this face and this face Look at that. See, so we've added some roundness to the cheek. See, that's a different character than this one. See, this one feels a little bit more gaunt, a little bit more kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe lightweight, featherweight. <laughs> and the other one is more, more heavyweight. <laughs> that was a terrible analogy. <laughs> you guys get what I'm saying? It, it just changes the character, changes the feeling of your character. So watch out for that stuff. There's so many subtleties in the face that go a long, long way, okay? So don't forget it. I don't feel bad being silly at this point because I know all the people that don't really care for the show, <laughs> don't care to watch the show this far, I've already left. And now I'm left with only the true fans that don't care if I say stupid stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> let's continue, let's continue. Okay, so I'm really, I'm really happy with that, yeah, yeah. I like it. Uh, oh, one more thing that I want to do before we move into color is I want to add some extra depth to this thing on the chest. This thing on the chest. So let's go like this, right? Look, I'm offsetting. Maybe well, that's what we'll call it. We'll call it offsetting. See how I've offset this diamond shape. And there you go. Super easy. And then I'm going to go ahead and create some lines that connect to this. So that was something about the old design that I remember. She had like these lines on her chest and it looked really nice. I'll kind of darken those in. I don't want to add too many values because again, we're going to be, we're going into color on this one. I like that this line is representing kind of the change in plane that's happening on this chest plate. So I don't want to lose that either. Don't want to lose that. And let's figure out just this last little bit of the chest plate. How did I do it up here? Ah! So that's what I did. Got these things kind of coming up here and connecting. Is that what I did? Okay, I think that's pretty, it's pretty good for now. It's pretty good for now. Yeah, I like it. Okay, last but not least, let's go ahead and move to every artist's favorite friend, although none of us like to admit it, liquify tool. Let's liquify this thing. Let's go ahead and set this thing to the background. And now we can do things such as we can take measurements. You can't see this right now, but I'm taking my hands, I'm taking my fingers and I'm measuring the head and I'm moving one head down and I'm saying that's where the chest should be. And that feels about right, feels about right. Um, however, because we're in a little bit of perspective, I'm gonna move the chest up slightly. Move this chest up slightly. Let's see, as far as the face, I'm liking that. I wanna take the hips and I wanna scoot them over a little bit. Scoop these hips over just a tad to give a little bit more of that S curve going on. I'm liking that a lot. And then as far as these eyes, let's see. As far as this face, um, do I want to take this and push this back a little bit? Do I want that? No. Do I want that? No. Maybe you're right in the middle. That looks good. Looks real good. Push it, compare. I'm, I'm pushing it and then I'm like looking at it for a second and if I don't like it, I hit control Z to 
kind of put it back where it was. I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now what I'll do is I'll just kind of click back and forth on the history down here. See, I'm clicking on my liquify. And I'm seeing which one I like more. Yeah, I really I like this one a lot more. Kind of push the chest up, feels a little bit more confident. We've got a little bit more curviness to the pose. Looks good. Again, every artist's favorite tool, but no one will ever tell you that. No one will ever tell you that they rely on the liquify tool. But I use it all the time. I use it in everything. So you guys should be using it too. And not feeling bad about it. Okay, I can already feel myself getting sucked into wanting to do more details. But I must say, enough. Now, let's go ahead and, hang on. <laughs> I want to put it a little bit here. All right, enough. Let's go ahead and get into some, <laughs> some colors. Okay, let's get into some colors. Ah, okay, so let's save that. Let's go ahead and uh, I think these lines are clean enough that we could do a magic wand treatment on it. Yeah, we could. We could. Let's go ahead and connect these lines down. So that way we can do this. Okay, so here's a really cool way for masking, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. All you gotta do is get your character on the layer. Go ahead and select everything around the character. Make sure your tolerance is set to something, I don't know, around like 50. 50 would probably work really well. Uh, apparently that's not working enough. Hmm, sample all layers, is that working? Okay, yeah, make sure sample all layers is cl clicked. This is really nice, because like if you're just booting up Photoshop, you'll wanna look out for this one. Sample all layers, see my cursor is jittering over there, that's where you want to go. Uh, sample all layers, yes. Contiguous, yes, and alias. Awesome. So now we're ready to go ahead and we want to expand. Also another thing that I usually have set on a hotkey, but I don't have it here. Let's expand it by five pixels. It's going to pull in our selection. See how now it's within our lines. Check it around your character really quickly. I think five might have actually been a bit much. Let's do, let's do like three, three pixels. There we go, that pulls in your selection because what we're gonna do next might just blow your mind. Might just blow your mind because we're going to hit Shift Control I, which is going to select everything. It's going to implode our selection. Now we've selected just the character. We're gonna create a new layer and then we're gonna edit fill that. We're gonna edit fill that. In fact, I'm thinking before we move into colors, we'll probably take a break. I'm gonna do this as a two-parter because I. My, my spidey sense is kicking in, and it's saying that we gotta do a two-parter. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and fill that, yes. And there you go, whoops, we missed the leg, but that's okay, we can easily fix that up with some good old ink brush. And there you go, you probably just saved yourself about 10 minutes having to draw on the silhouette of your character. So now you can pull these all, all these old ones back up. And now we're ready to move into part two, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you for joining me today on part one. Yes, part two is coming out the same day. Don't you worry about that. I'll see you guys in just a few minutes. Take care. Take care, ladies and gentlemen. See you in a sec. Let's do some colors on La Pong. La Pong.